Our scripture today is going to be Hebrews 12, 2. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. It's good to meet together to discuss the things that are never going to pass away, huh? <laughs> Jesus and his words will always be with us. And I endeavor to bring you to him this morning. The real Jesus. Not a Jesus that's based on a denomination or a teaching of men. The one whom God has declared to us in the record that he has given of his son. That's the one. Just as there is one faith and one hope, one baptism, one God and Father, one truth, one Holy Spirit, there is only one Jesus Christ. He is the only begotten Son of the Father. God has told us to hear Him. He is the only one who has thoroughly pleased and satisfied God. The Jesus I am presenting over the course of this series is this person declared and appointed by God Himself the only one by whom men are saved. Mm -hmm. Now today I would like to focus on this, this particular truth concerning his working ministry and person. Sister June hinted on this this morning that this fits perfectly with that the things that we do in Christ are the works of Christ himself. Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of our faith. Let's talk about his authorship. What does that word really mean, to be an author? Let's look at today's dictionary. But really quick, I want to give a disclaimer before we begin. The meaning and the usefulness of a particular word is not necessarily established by a lexicon or a dictionary definition. What I'm doing here is simply just bringing this word to our recollection and having a discussion on it. So here, this word author in today's dictionary says, a writer of a book, article, or report. And that's it. I checked several other, other dictionaries that are popular in our day, Oxford, Webster's, they all pretty much say the same thing. No further explanation is really given than meaning the composer of some sort of literary work. Now let's look at Webster's 1828 English Dictionary and let's see what the English speaking people of 189 years ago had to say about the word. Author. It, from Latin, octor, the Latin word is the root of agio, which means to increase or to enlarge. The primary sense is one who causes to come to bring forth, one who produces, creates, or causes to come into being, as God is the author of the universe. The beginner, the former, or mover of anything, hence the efficient cause of a thing. It is appropriately applied to one who composes an original work. Now, and it goes on to say that it could also be used to denote somebody who writes books opposed to a compiler or a translator. But brethren, I'm telling you that that word has, has severely lost its meaning in our day. As a society becomes more and more decadent and sinful, their language degrades as well. So I want to properly spell these things out to you. When I, when I say Jesus is the author and the finisher of, my fa of our faith, what does that really mean? The word in Greek is archegas, which means author. It's also used in Acts 5.31 for prince and in Hebrews 2.10 for captain. The surrounding context, of course, being the thrust for which the word is used. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Other versions say pioneer and perfecter of our faith. That's New International. The champion who initiates and perfects our faith. That's New Living Translation. The founder and the perfecter of our faith. You see, the word author in its true form, it carries with it all of these realities. That Jesus is the founder, the forerunner, the leader, the molder, the creator. See, Jesus isn't just writing your story, so to speak. There's not like, this isn't like a simplistic thing that Jesus is working. There's more involved in it than mere penmanship. Just as a potter has power over the clay, or a prince has power over a people, or a captain is performing the mission of the king, the work of faith is a profound and involved work of which Jesus is the creator, instructor, constructor, founder, initiator, innovator, originator, pioneer, inventor, architect, engineer, and potentate. He is the reason behind the efficacy of the work. 
He has not only created it, but causes that creation to be effective by design and for a purpose. He has not created it just for the sake of creating it, but for an intended function and purpose. Faith is held together. It comes into existence. It's intentionally designed and it's distributed purposefully by his power, his authority, and his leadership. He is the author of our faith. Selah. Think about that. Not everyone has faith. 2 Thessalonians 3, 2 will tell us. I know people say things like, well, everyone has faith in something. But you see, this is just another word that has been hijacked by our time. Some even go as far to say the Muslim faith, the Buddhist faith. Well, there is no other faith. There is one faith. This is the faith that Jesus is the author of. Consequently, this is why there is no other faith. Because he's the only author of faith. Think of it. Who else would be capable of creating anything like a saving faith other than our God? Amen. You can't teach someone how to have faith, right. meaning there's no way for a person to manufacture faith in themselves. There's no way to create faith by a routine or by a system of thinking or any other such way. Faith isn't a personal accomplishment or revelation or some sort of private realization of truth spawned from within the individual. Amen. It's also not something that we can give to somebody else. You can't give anybody else your faith. Amen. You can't pass your faith on to your children. Faith isn't like contagious. There is an encourage now there's an encouraging influence that faith has on others who possess the same faith. In Romans 1 12 but your faith to those who do not possess faith will only cause a person to either marvel in unbelief or they will more than likely likely put you into the category of weirdos the point is this brethren faith must be authored and faith is something that we must receive from God faith comes to us I said faith comes to us by hearing and by hearing the word of God. It actually has to come to you, which means it's something that's sent. And who sends it? Well, it's not sent by the preacher. The preacher sends you the word. God gives the ears that hear. And when the word is heard, faith is received from heaven. John the Baptist told us in John 3, 27, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Faith is like a package that was sent to your door by God with its origin from Jesus. Faith is a noun. Faith is an actual thing. The scripture calls it evidence and substance. It's substantive. It's like the tangible part of the spirit, or in other words, it's, it's rather it's the thing that makes the things of the spirit tangible to us. I know that sounds contradictory to some people, but to those of us who have faith, we understand this, that faith is, faith is like the arm of the soul. It reaches forth and it's able to, to take hold of things that the Lord has for us. Amen. Let's think about the tangible natural creation. How is the creation tangible? by our senses, right? Consider your eyes and your ears. What do they do? Your eyes see and your ears hear. And how do I know that there's a pulpit in front of me? Because I can see it. I can feel it. My senses tell me that it's here. Your eye is a noun. It's a thing. And seeing is what your eye does. My hand feels. It's a noun. It, it, and feeling is what it does. Now imagine if somebody told you it's not enough to have eyes, you also have to see things. That's essentially what people are saying when they tell you, it's not enough just to have faith, you also have to obey. See, this is precisely how faith operates. This is precisely how Jesus has authored faith. It always obeys. Faith always trusts God. Just as eyes see and ears hear, believing and obeying is what faith always does. If a person has faith, they will believe. Amen. They will trust God. Amen. They will submit to him. Amen. They will do and they will keep his commandments. This is how the scripture can say things like, the just shall live by faith. Yeah. And at the same time say, this is the work of God that ye believe on him that whom you have sent. 
And to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. These are things that faith always does. And faith like picks up momentum. Faith has this momentum that it just more and more as it grows. We're talking this morning about Jesus being the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus has authored these things in faith. He's produced these things for our salvation. He's designed its primary function, and he has put all things in place in order for faith to operate properly, and he's designed it with a certain and profitable function. And this is why faith is enough. It doesn't make any difference what men say about their claim to faith. If they do not believe, if they do not obey, or if they are perpetually fruitless over time, how can they have faith? People expect somebody with eyes to be able to see. That's the normal mode of the eye. Hearing is the normal mode of the ear. When we go to the doctor, the, the clean bill of health is that you're able to hear with your ears and see with your eyes. My point is, is that everything that Jesus has authored is perfect and it serves a purpose. Even these mortal bodies that we live in are fearfully and wonderfully made. The same one who authored these bodies in the natural creation has also authored faith. Now, of course, this is where the parallel between the seen and the unseen breaks down. There are some people who have difficulty seeing and problems hearing, even though they have eyes and ears on their bodies. But this is not true of those who have faith. Faith can never be defective. Those who possess real saving faith will experience what faith does. And even though our outward man is perishing, our inward man is being renewed day by day. Amen. The same Jesus who created the eye to see, the ear to, ear, ear to hear, the mouth to speak, the mind to think, and the heart to beat has authored the faith that perceives, obeys, hears, and believes. Jesus has authored it. Jesus cannot make mistakes when he makes something. Everything that he has created, Jesus has created in perfection. When the creation was made by Jesus, God looked at it and saw that it was very good. Amen. And it would have remained good if sin had not entered into the world by man's transgression, causing God to curse it. Even of Lucifer himself, it is written, Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. Jesus doesn't make mistakes, brethren. Amen. And even though sin has corrupted the natural creation, faith cannot be touched by the devil or his cohorts. Amen. For a person to say that they have faith, but no evidence of that profession is present, it means they don't have faith, and it's insulting to Jesus to falsely promote his work as powerless or useless. Yes. Amen. The work of faith that Jesus begins in us is intended to move us closer and closer to the Lord and further and further away from everything else. Spiritual growth is described as from faith to faith. Here is the righteousness of God revealed, from faith to faith. As we know God more and more, we're moving from faith to faith. This is part of the authorship that Jesus is, is doing. Living by faith causes us to be productive to God. When a person is born, their eyes can see, their ears can hear, and their hands can feel, but they cannot yet work. But see, as they grow up, they're able to interact with the things that they can perceive in a profitable way. Amen. In like manner, as we progress from faith to faith, we're able to lay hold on eternal life. We're able to lay hold on the things of the kingdom and become profitable co-laborers with him. Amen. See, this is part of Jesus' authorship Amen. of faith. Like I said, faith is like a spiritual arm that can reach out and, and, and grab onto these things. All of these things are accessible to you by faith. All of the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are accessible by faith. The throne of grace is accessible that we may obtain help in the time of need and be afforded a way of escape and temptation. By faith, we can perceive things as they really are instead of the illusions presented by the enemy. We have freedom to explore the length and depth and breadth and height of our great salvation. Everything in the life of the believer hinges on faith. 
If you don't have it, you can't even please God. If you do have it, nothing can move you away from God. Christ actually dwells in our hearts by faith. But see, this work of faith is not only authored by Jesus. It's finished by him as well. And actually, this is the only way that Jesus can effectively author faith in you to begin with. Because he's the one who's finishing it. He is the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. And he is also the only finisher. Whenever anything in this world comes to completion, brethren, Jesus is ultimately behind the finishing of it. Since the beginning, he's been a finisher. Let's consider it. The natural creation was not only started by him, but finished by him. He finished the work, and God saw that it was very good. He finishes the times that God has appointed. Every time and season appointed not only has a beginning, but an expected end. Jesus being in charge of the conclusion of every matter. The putting away of sin was finished by him, was it not? Yeah. not and, and, and not only in being the propitiation for our transgression, not only in putting away the enmity that was there, but he put an end to men being dominated by sin. He put an end to Satan just having his way with whoever he wanted. He overthrew the devil, Amen. and he triumphed over the enemy. Amen. He fulfilled the law. He finished the work of atonement and reconciliation on the earth. And his ultimate work is to finish the work of God. Jesus is even satisfied by this. He says, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish, and to finish the work. Amen. He is the finisher of our faith. Yeah. And when it's fulfilled, he'll shout out, it's done! Amen. I finished the work! Yes. Ultimately, no one else's will will be accomplished outside of God's will. No one else's purpose can be accomplished outside of God's purpose. Men may begin the build, but if they cannot finish, if Jesus does not become involved in the work. Wicked men's plans and ambitions are rooted in a world that is passing away. Therefore, they will always come up shorter than they expect. Consider what the scriptures say about this. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Solomon said, Be not overmuch wicked, neither be thou foolish, why shouldest thou die before thy time? Yeah. Jesus is in control of the times. <clears throat> He's completing the work that the Father has given him to complete. You see, when a man begins to build and he doesn't have enough to finish, people will mock. Well, I'm here today, today to tell you, brethren, that God is not mocked. <laughs> he will always finish his work. We thank, and we thank God that he finishes everything that he starts. We can then say with confidence, he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Did he, has he started something in you? Are you running the race? Are you looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith? He's going to bring you all the way to completion. And Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 is like the hall of faith. And you can see what faith does in everybody that possesses it. They all overcame. Everyone who lived by faith and died by faith overcame and obtained a good report. Right? Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Yeah. Amen. Dominion, Amen. majesty, power, yeah. author. Amen. See how those, those are connected. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Mankind who was born in sin, so feeble and so frail, couldn't see at all behind the mystery of the veil. The verdict plainly seen is that all were very dead. Their minds were nailed right to the earth and just like Sisera's head. They could not see beyond a single thing of that which was seen. Spiritual life was only a facade or a fleeting dream. All was vanity for men. They met the air with grasping. The focus was only temporal and could not be everlasting. But a savior from above had authored something from the throne to help mankind take hold of things the world has never known. It was calculated to perform a work when mixed with grace, and he deposited it in Abraham to showcase his first faith. 
It comes to us by hearing the word of God and what he's done. When the open ear hears what the Lord is doing through his son. With it, we finally could see and take hold upon our Savior to go to him receiving a new heart and a new nature. For Jesus is the only author of the faith in which will save. The faith when kept its function is it always will obey. Our ears they hear, our eyes they see, our hands feel and perceive. So faith when it is kept its function always will believe. The access granted by this faith so offered from above moves us closer to his holiness and righteousness and love. For the very work of faith in you held tightly from the start will be finished in you perfectly by the time that you do depart. So hold tightly to your faith, dear friends, and never let it go. For its imputed righteousness makes thee whiter than the snow. Jesus did the work for us. By faith we do receive it. He started it. He'll finish it. By faith we can believe it. Yes. Amen.